All right, so we've written this little program that gets some user input and then outputs it. This is very standard stuff in the world of programming. And so we've got that input. If we run the program, sure enough, uh, enter your name, Ted, hello, Ted. Whatever we enter in there, it's going to uh, print that out. So we can write the program this way. We can organize it this way. Or we can break it out and use different methods and organize it a little bit differently. And so I could have a different method be responsible for printing the output. And uh, hopefully this is a concept that you are familiar with, but we're just going to review it here. So I can create another method. Now this is, uh, we start out with the question, do we want it to be public or private? Do we want other outside classes to be able to call this method or not? Probably in this case, we still want it to be private because it's going to be called by that main method. Uh, as it turns out, because the main method is static, it's going to want this method to be static because it's being, going to be called by the main method. So I'll just leave the static in here. Is it going to return anything? For now, we're not going to have it return anything void. And then we'll give it a name, print stuff. All right, so print stuff. Um, I guess we could be a little more, <laughs> let's say print name, um, a little more specific. And then what does it need in order to be able to print the name? And it even gives you, I'll create a string called uh, name for you as an option. We need our opening and closing brace. And now we have this print name method that we can have do whatever we want it to do. Now I'm going to, because it was name up here, I'm going to change this one. And I wouldn't typically want you to name uh, variables just generically like this. Because again, it's really hard when you're trying to upgrade a program and you say, what does n mean? That's not descriptive at all. I have to go back and look at the code and like a detective try and figure out what was n in this chain. It's so much easier the more descriptive it is. First name, right? It's so much more descriptive. But for now, just to prove this point, I want to say just n. And then this line I'll take and in Visual Studio I can just take and drag. I'll drag that down there. Um, and so we're going to print out the, the right line, but instead of name, now it's going to need, it's going to want to know what's the name of the variable. In this case, the variable name is N. So hello and then N. Now this program uh, should work exactly the same if I call the method. So I say print name, which is the name of this method. And then I put in there. What am I passing in? Well, I'm going to pass in whatever the user entered for their name. So I passed the name variable in. And then that is what goes through. I think about these parentheses in terms of like a little portal. The example I use, I know this is weird, but it's what I think of in my head. Because if you've ever done this, if you've ever been to the doctor and they want a urine sample. All right. This is probably in bad taste. I'm going to do it anyway then it's so weird to me because you take and you go there in the cup and then you take the cup and there's a little metal door you slide the cup through and i just think who is the person on the other side of this that's getting this cup out it's such a weird job it's got to be such a weird job somebody just at some point hands you a cup of pee and you take it gross okay sorry did not mean to be gross on here but it's that's what I think of. You take, you've got this variable that you've created over here. It's called name. This method knows nothing about the name variable because the scope of this variable name is between this brace and this brace. That's its life and its death. When we hit this outside brace, this is released from memory. It's gone. And so it only exists inside these two braces. Likewise, this n variable that's been declared it only exists between these two braces. This method can't see this variable, and this method can't see that variable. And so what we have to get the variable from one place to another are these parentheses, and it's just like that little metal door. We take and pass through this name variable. Now, what goes through is not the name variable. Um, what goes through is what's in the name variable. So if it was Spencer, What's going to be passed in is Spencer. It goes and reads in from memory what the information is and then sends that along if we're doing it this way. Again, 
you can pass things in different ways in other languages. But in this instance, we're taking and passing that information that's inside that variable. And so what we get on this end is it sees a Spencer and it's passed into and stored in this n variable. Does that make sense? So what's actually stored, if, you, if you're interested, what's actually stored in name is the address in memory where to go find the information. And it knows it's a string, so it's gonna go find the information, information the size of a string. So what's passed in again is this name uh, what's inside the name variable is passed to here. We're stored here. So now we can take that information and print it out. Let's try it. So um, back to our command line. So tools, command line, I don't think I already have one up. And then developer command prompt. And we're in the right folder so I can do my CSC program.cs. I run that, everything compiled good. So that's a good sign. And then I can say, uh, let's go run that thing, program.exe, please enter your name, you can enter your name, I'll enter mine, Spencer, and it says, hello, Spencer. So this program is still working, but now we have organized it differently. Well, why did we want to organize it differently? There are lots of reasons, but one of the reasons is just to make it cleaner, to make it more organized. My wife is just so big on this. If you saw her house, you know, you open up a drawer and for me, the drawer is the storage. You just throw stuff in the drawer. And that's kind of like how we had it at first. My wife inside the drawer will have little containers. One's just the perfect size for the toothbrush and the toothpaste. The next one's the perfect size for the deodorant. The next one's the perfect size for the Q-tips. And she's got inside the drawer, it's all organized into little uh, sections for that thing. It's just a better way to write code, much easier to read uh, if we do it this way, much cleaner. And then there's other elements like, and we'll talk about this further, encapsulation, uh, making everything do its specific job makes it easier to debug and also easier to take certain components and put them in other parts of the program. So we'll, we'll elaborate on that a little bit further, but this is a, a better way potentially to write this little program. Um, anyway, this is, this is, uh, breaking it out and using different methods to accomplish this task. Now, the other thing we could do is return from this method. And so I could say what I want to do instead is return the information. So string is what I'm going to return out of this method. And then what I could do within the method is not print it, but instead what I would do is take and build the string. So I could say, uh, let's take the uh, n variable that's coming in, well, n, and set it equal to um, whatever n was. Well, sorry, let's, let's change that. So n, and I could say hello, and then concatenate on. I'm trying to go too fast because I'm looking at the clock. I can't do this hello, and then whatever was an N. And I could make that, let's let's not use N. I, I changed my mind, I don't like that. <laughs> For teaching anyway. Okay, so we're gonna create a string called the output and set it equal to blank to begin with. And then I could say, let's set the output equal to hello and then N. And then, I've got an extra brace in here. I'm going to return from this method the output that I just created. So I'm taking in the input, I'm modifying, to setting this output, and now I'm returning the output. And so the result of this could be passing in the name, but then I what I would do instead is say system.console.writeLine, and the line that I'm gonna write is going to be the result of what was returned there. And so if I save this and run it, and I gotta do this kind of quickly. Please enter your name, Spencer. And it still prints out the same thing. The difference is, is that I'm passing the name in, it's doing something with the name and then returning the output. And what is being returned is what's being printed. All right, we'll elaborate a little more in the next video. Spencer, out.